Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with our BRC 1970 24 hour race at the Nürburgring or rather the car creation for that race. And we have in the past two episodes come pretty far uh, designing our car and it is now known as uh, the 24H70 uh, because the, and it's the Flechette of course missing the the, the French character in there because um, we we want to be her her heretics in that regard. Uh, th this car is going, it's going well, and it's scoring very highly too. So we are doing superbly. There is a f now a few more touches we um, need to apply, some more optimizations, and from there we are going to make the race car version of it after designing it. Right from the start I wanted to share with you some answers that I got straight from the horse's mouth. In this case it is a Bavarian horse and a really smart one too. And uh, it's called Martin. And that, that horse said that um, the fuel tank is in the center of gravity. So if we are setting up our car and we are losing weight as uh, part of the fuel, that means that the um, handling balance does not change. So whatever we set it up to be, it will remain. Also, if we have tire wear, uh, that won't affect the handling of the car directly, but rather indirectly, it's a little fudged. It's looking at the, uh, for the rear tires, the, the tire wear is looking at the grip reserves or what you would see here. Um, you have the dashed line here, which is our grip and then we have the maximum acceleration that is coming on the rear tires there so we have plenty of grip reserves and no wheel spin at the moment this is looking very nice this should be quite drivable in fact tire wear on the front tires instead affects your cornering speeds and that means it's just um, subtracting basically the the cornering g's that you can pull and we want to get this as high as possible, of course. But also the other number, which is that one. That one that is not being indicated. Uh, yeah, this one is a little scary here, but it's all under steering, so it's fine. And just as a reminder, we do want to get the car down to a weight that is exactly 100 kilos less than this for the race trim. And that will be mainly achieved by pulling down that slider. It's still not quite getting there. Uh, some more, oh. Yeah, I don't even know if we are going to be able to get it to the minimum weight. That would be a shame if we don't. Now, there are not that many options that we have to get it there. I think our gearing is pretty bad at the moment. Uh, that should be optimized a little further. I don't think we are going to see anything that is remotely close to those speeds this might be achievable 220 ish yeah roughly and then we have some more there which we're not going to hit also of course if you are um, racing behind another car then you will see some slipstream effects I believe that is in and uh, the, with the draft then yes you can reach higher speeds than this so you do need a little bit of leeway here and this one is now topping out at uh, 234. Uh, yes. Um, okay, is this enough? Is, is, this, is this good? I don't know. Um, do we need to optimize it for 0 to 100? We do not. But it is fun to see where we end up. So let's just lower this and see what kind of acceleration we have. Uh, 7.6 seconds. Not too shabby. I do want to make the gearing quite tight so that we don't have too much of a drop off here between the gears and oh, we do have now well, this this is just bad from out of the pits and so on but and it's a very slow corners but they're not that many slow corners most of the track is pretty fast uh, I did get the uh, um, such a nice shape by the way of the car uh, I did get the test track or the test track the actual 24 hour track uh, that we're going to race and I think it is time to uh, send this car around the test track uh, a little and see how it performs what kind of time we're getting so let's get rolling 
All right, are you are you done soon? This takes forever because the track is so damn long. Any time now, any time now, I promise. There we go, finally. Holy shit, that took a long one. And there we're finally accelerating out. All right, that, the car's barely moving at 100 kilometers an hour. That's how large this track is. Okay, 219 was our top speed, and we are. If you if you're wondering if you're going to hit your top speed there or not, then usually that's a no, unless you have well for a car of this size and this power, it is a no. Um, for other cars, this might be the the main straight. Um, but this car, this is mainly uphill, so that's not going to happen there. This is one of the fastest pieces of the track. And uh, we reached 219, which seems to be fitting pretty much spot on with our gearing. That is right at the peak here, right at peak power. And that will tell me that we actually want to gear it slightly lower than this. Let's try this instead. Uh, 226, 223, that's a little too low. Something, something around there, 227. Um, okay, are we going to hit that button again? 9.52, by the way, is a pretty good time. Okay, with the slightly improved gearing, we are sub 9.52. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I'm going to keep that. Um, do we further want to optimize these numbers? The answer is no, because this is not the race version of this car. But what we could do is just... Um, Let's, let's hold the car, so, uh, throw on some semi-slicks and increase the front tire size until it hurts. Um, there we go. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, that, that is uh, quite good. Um, at 113. This no longer is good, though. So I'm going to um, decrease front angle and increase rear. Oh, there we already have it. So increase front again. Come on, push it a little harder. There we go. Oh, nope, that was one too far. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so uh, I think we do have a little bit too much now. Yeah, but that's basically where we are supposed to be at. One kilo, one kilogram too much downforce. Um, of course, we're not going to put that car into production, but or oh, into the race, but still. Oh, also. Uh, just to check out where we will be roughly. Let's pull this one down. Uh, this will change everything. This will change everything. Okay. It's 812 kilograms. That is fine. We are going to drop this by one. Yeah, this is still really good. Um, can probably optimize this a little. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was nice, though. <laughs> uh, that's still looking good. Let's see if we can get a little bit more out of that. 
Uh, more front angle. There we go. It's creeping up. No, that was one too much. So, perfect. What are our numbers now? 1.14 and 1.20. Holy shit. That's impressive. Okay. Uh, 810, so we are way above what we would be allowed to have, and our power to weight is not that great. I expected it to increase a bit more. But what time would we be running on this machine then? Okay. Okay. What is it? Holy shit! <laughs> 9.38! Okay! Yeah, that is... Uh, is very respectable. Um, for 1.8 liter especially. Okay, that's that's awesome. Um, I think this would be somewhat competitive, despite lacking a little power. And it's also somewhat fuel efficient, of course. But we are going to revert those changes. Uh, revert to head car. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, this is actually pretty much crazy good. As much as you can get out of sports tires, that's for sure. Uh, 1.08 Gs in the corners. And now we're even one kilogram short on the downforce. That's fantastic. And our final offering for this car is a 950.24. Yeah, that is a good production car, that. And that is on Sports Compound. Um, so let's do a little bit of scrutineering uh, for this one. Homologation car, the H. Um, before we start designing this. Okay, so uh, I'm going through this list here, and that is uh, car body family year, trim year, family year, variant year, all upper limit 1970. We have them all at 1970, so that is all good. Our engine size in that class that we are in is supposed to be smaller than 2000 cc and we are at 1800 so very very much in the uh, on, on the underpowered side um, but we are pushing so much power out of this little thing the only thing i'm wondering is if we might want to go a bit more towards the um, lean side because fuel consumption is a thing and we might squeeze another lap out of this thing before we need to go into the pits. And pit stops, of course, take time. So we, we will see in practice then, in the practice session, uh, for the race car version of this, um, where we are at with fuel consumption. If we can, with a little bit of tweaking, get another lap out of it, or if we don't want to risk that we do also want to have a bit of leeway on the fuel consumption so that we uh, if we have a damaged car that we don't all of a sudden run out and so on um, anyway that looks good we are not allowed to have let's see wait wait a second at least one muffler well that's easy yes we have one um, then the engine engineering time below 90 and production units below 90 and that is or below or equal to 90. We have it exactly equal to 90. And this is a third of 90 last time I checked, roughly, even below that. Uh, so that's good. It's looking, looking fancy. We do have a fantastic reliability on this thing. That is 39.3. Uh, it's really good for a carbed engine. Okay, that was all for the the engine. Now let's do some scrutineering for the car. No quality on the chassis, body, tires, and aerodynamics. All right, no quality there. Um, chassis, body, yeah, that's, that's that. Chassis was here. Chassis quality, zero. Okay, perfect. Uh, that's all good. No semi-slicks. No semi-slicks. We are on sports compounds. That's all legal um, for the homologation car. And then we can choose semi-slicks for the race version if we wanted to. Then, let's go further. Down for some front and r plus rear in kilograms on the test track tab is 
Uh, the sum is 74, if I'm counting that right. So we are one kilo short of the maximum. It's good. Um, the minimum weight is 776 for the engine capacity we have, and we are beyond that. And it's a minimum weight, not a maximum weight. Um, so we are very much safe there. And then general part choice. No limited production parts in group 1, 2, and 3. We are part of group 3, so no limited production parts. Let's just double check that nowhere are we using anything that has production flags. Uh, no, 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 of course not, of course not. So in the engine, that doesn't have a production flag. This is all good stuff. Uh, we have super standard. <laughs> we are running cast internals. Uh, that's so funny. Um, and then nothing here, nothing there, of course. Nothing specific here. Exhaust, this for instance, raised tubular headers would not be allowed because they are um, they have the no mass production flag that is what is meant by by this rule uh, you're not allowed to have any production flags and this is one of them so we're good here uh, open exhaust is nice yes so engine is good and let's go through the car uh, that is all standard stuff no production flags on this uh, nothing here either this is all good. Semi-clad. That doesn't have a production flag. No. No, that's fine. Uh, interior, of course not. That is perfect. And here, nothing to see here. <laughs> no production flags. And no production flags there either. And, most important of all, are we scoring in the required demographic? So, uh, market score. Ingesmia, Hedvesia, or Froenia. Over 100 in at least one of the demographics muscle light sport light sport budget or sport budget Froenia is our country and yes we just say yes because that is almost all of them not muscle for sure with our 1.8 liter engine but uh, light sport yes sport budget yes and light sport budget uh, 88 so no uh, but yeah that is that is well beyond the limit so this car passes and let's see are there any other rules naming conventions very important don't forget about these car model naming convention car model is supposed to be 24 h70 uh, space dash space your username yeah last time I checked that was kill Rob um, then car trim naming convention H, large H, uh, space dash space, your car name. Yep, cool. Um, we call that the Flechette GT because reasons. Uh, gra small sm ST, small touring. <laughs> it's the Flechette ST. It's a very small touring car. Um, and then, is there something else? Well, the deadline, yes. Cool, that's fine. So I think this one is done. Uh, we do need to name the engine, of course. There, we can't can't have the engine named nothing. We call it the Bramble B4A, and it's the 1800 ST for small touring. <laughs> I like the small touring. The so grand touring is for for wankers. <laughs> We're going for the small touring. Oh, one thing we did not check, I believe, is or recheck is the engineering time and production units for the car. We still have some left over here. We could push something that we want to push, like quality or so on. And that might actually be a thing that we want to do for the power steering that we don't have. Because that increases production units, but not so much engineering time, but it ups the uh, drivability of your car. And not the sportiness. So that would improve the ratio that we see here a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's scoring very nicely there. And, yep, perfect. Still below 95, both of them. That's uh, what we need. Didn't change any weight, so I don't have to change brakes or whatnot. This is all good. No wheel spin. Nice. And no brake fade either, I believe. Yep, zero. Perfect. Oh, one more thought. Oh, shit. Okay. 
one more little thing. We can get away with selecting basic interior. That makes the car a few kilograms lighter and that is something that we're not allowed to choose for the race car. So I think we need to do that. Could also go for sport, but that is... Uh, does it make it lighter? No, it makes it slightly heavier. Basic is basically the the perfect sports interior because it's extremely basic. Um, yeah. So a few kilo, four kilograms lighter than this. No, even more than that. Uh, it's six kilograms lighter than the the uh, standard interior. Our stats are far worse. Ooh. The drivability is far worse, but that is probably because the steering behavior changed. Oh, yep. Yep, there we go. Holy shit! Cornering 1.09? Yeah, we can't have that decrease in reliability, uh, in uh, drivability, though. We need to turn this around and hope this stays. Uh, what is the... Yeah, that's... Oh, that's still fast. I believe that's still fast. Uh, we can increase the downforce one tick. Come on. Turn it around. Oh, fuck. There we go. Okay. Now, that that one is now turned around. That's good. Gained super much sportiness from that, which is not necessarily something that we want. And we do have... Uh, yeah. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's still about a kilogram lower than the max. No? No, wait a second. This is... Friend of Grumpy? Ah, I need a need calculator for this shit. Oh, uh, that's a kilogram less. Yes, it's fine. Uh, slightly less than that. But... Oh, 1.09. I need to... I want to see the test track time for this one. This is crazy. Look at that. 1.09 and 1.13. Holy shit. And there we go. Oh, wow. This is so much slower. <laughs> this is so much slower. Yeah, that's not great. Uh, is it because of the oversteer? Terminal oversteer? Because that's pretty much terrible. Um, do want to have... Don't want to have even more camber. Are we even allowed to change camber? Let's see. Rim size, tire diameter, yes. Uh, camber. Where's the camber? That is a yes. That is a yes. We are allowed to change the camber. So if we drop it to here, that should be a lot better. If we drop it one more, okay, that normalizes it a bit, and still 1.08, so that's good. Uh, Lower sportiness, that's good as well. And there we go. Wow. Now that is a, a score to settle on. This is a 9.48 and very high. 48, it's 49 basically. But uh, yeah, we shaved off a few seconds there. To be exact, four seconds since we started the episode. That is quite the achievement. Um, and it's significant. I mean, yeah, we are talking about 10 minutes total time. So <laughs> Percentage-wise, that's not that much. But four seconds is not to be underestimated. Oh, I think the uh, change over to a basic none was the um, the way to go. So, Kerob, are you finally going to design your car then? Uh, well, the answer is yeah, kinda. Um, I still love my double lip setup that doesn't look like a double lip. Um, it's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, yes, I'm going to make it acceptable. Let's let's say it like that. I'm not going to design design it to perfection but we're going to take a look at it I'm, I'm just recalling it and uh, probably fast forwarding it or something and we should we shall see so let's start
right, there we go. Took me a while, but I think we have arrived at something that is, let's say, at least uh, somewhat acceptable. It's not a looker, that's for sure, but it it, uh, it, it barely works. It barely works. It's uh, what I would say, uh, meh. <laughs> Maybe, maybe a five, not not even, this is just uninspired. But it is a car, and that is what we set out to make. It will outshine its looks on the track, that's for sure. So uh, I'm going to take this one. And I think with this, the only thing left to do is to submit this car. I hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time.